Hello and welcome to Middle Eastern Thursdays. So today I have for you 12 fragrances. So these are fragrances that I picked up and I received them and then I removed the plastic wrapper but I have not tried them because I've been waiting for you. So we're going to go ahead today and I'm going to do a first impression and as always of course later I will circle back with a detailed review for each of the fragrances. But before we jump right in, if this is your first time here, I'm Arahi and in this channel we love to talk about fragrances because we love to smell fabulous at all times. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays and sometimes you even get a bonus video for the week. If that sounds like the type of content that you're interested in and like a good plan, then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget, leave a comment. Let's go. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. And the first fragrance that I have today, I'm not sure that I know how to pronounce this name, but I think it's L Lure, <laughs> Lure d'Espoir, uh, Lure d'Espoir Arena. And it comes in this box and it's from Emir. And let's go ahead and open it. It just has like this foldable opening here. Oh. All right, and then here is the fragrance, and it comes in like this secondary packaging. This is like a cylinder, um, but it's covered like with cardboard. This is a pretty nice packaging. And here is the bottle. All right, so let me go ahead and share with you the notes of this fragrance. So top is bergamot rose, black currant buds, pink pepper. Middle notes are rose, iris, and jasmine. And at the base, we have amber, oud, wood, and patchouli. So I can't remember who I heard talk about this fragrance, but I have really been looking to trying at least one of the fragrances from this Emir collection. Because I know there's, I think there's a couple of more fragrances that are part of this collection. So let's go ahead and spray. So I forgot to tell you that this fragrance is supposed to be inspired by Louis Vuitton's Le Sable Roses. I've never tried that fragrance, but this is definitely a rose fragrance. So the rose note is very dominant here, and I'm trying to figure out like what type of rose is this. But I can tell you that this fragrance is quite ambery. It's a bit woody. It's woody, but it's not like it's really woody woody, you know, like... It's just like, you can tell there are some woody notes in there. It's a bit sweet. And the oud that you find in here, in the oud meter, I would say is like a two out of five. So it's, it's kind of like a light oud, not faint, uh, because you can definitely tell there's oud in the fragrance, but it's definitely a light oud. Yeah, this is really nice. I have to tell you, this is to me like a whimsical type of, youthful without being juvenile okay i'm not saying it's juvenile but this is like a very youthful and kind of whimsical type of rose oud fragrance i'm sniffing it and sniffing it because i'm really liking it because it's very like very fresh and you know i'm used to rose oud fragrances that are not really fresh right it's, it's rare to find a rose oud fragrance that's not very intense and very deep and kind of dark. And But this one, there's an airiness to this one that I'm really, really loving. This is very different. I'm so glad I picked this up because I really love the note of rose. And of course, you know, I love oud. Very, very interesting. And like I said, I've never gotten my nose on the Louis Vuitton fragrance that it's supposed to be inspired by, so I really can't tell you if it's exactly the same. So I do like this fragrance. I went off camera for a minute and continued to sniff it because it's just so different. It's like a very different rose oud fragrance. I'm kind of like shocked here because I've never expected to find a rose oud fragrance that is kind of like fresh and light and airy. 
it's just a beautiful beautiful fragrance and this rose this is like a young rose but it's not a rose that's still in the process of opening it's like when the rose first opens that very fresh rose scent that you get that's what i get in this fragrance i'm really really loving this and i did pick up on the bergamot and the pink pepper but but this fragrance is all about the rose with a very light oud in the background that's really what all I'm getting right now. But of course, remember, this fragrance hasn't had a chance to macerate or anything. I would say that this is a fragrance that anybody can use. I mean, it's so airy and light. It's just beautiful. I think anybody, all the way from their early 20s and on, I mean, anybody can use this fragrance. And this definitely, to me, this to me is really a feminine fragrance. This is not unisex at all. Yeah, this is definitely feminine. And I think I already shared with you from the oud meter perspective, it would be like a two out of five because this is a light oud, not a faint oud. You're going to smell the oud, but it's just very light. This is like the perfect entry level, if I could call it something, to an oud fragrance in my opinion. All right, so the next fragrance that I have for you is Rayway Monarch. And I hope that I'm pronouncing it correctly. So it comes in this box. And then you open it and there's the fragrance and here is the bottle it feels very luxurious and weighty and look at this cap i hope the camera is picking it up this is quite weighty guys this feels really really luxurious so this is supposed to be inspired by fenty of course by rihanna like the fenty fragrance I, to be honest with you, I, I tried it or sniffed it actually when it first came out, but I never picked it up, not because of anything. I just never came around to it and didn't even think about it, but I'm very excited. That is one of the reasons I'm very excited to try this one. And if any of you actually have this fragrance and the Fenty fragrance, or if you're familiar with the Fenty fragrance and you have this one, please let me know. Like. How do they really compare? Are they, are they like 80% the same, 90%? Let me know because I'm really, really interested. So let's go ahead and give you the notes. Notes of this fragrance are supposed to be top cranberry and mandarin orange. Um, in the middle, it's Bulgarian rose, geranium and magnolia. And at the base, we have patchouli and musk. Oh boy, let's go ahead and spray it. Wow, this is really, really intense. I can tell this is going to be a beast mode fragrance. So this is sweet, not very sweet, but just like right sweet. It has a fruity opening, but I cannot distinguish the fruits that I'm picking up. I'm also picking up some oud and I don't remember seeing oud in the notes, but I really do think there's some oud in here. Oh, but I really like this fragrance. This smells so good. So please let me know if this is what Fenty smells like to you. I'm picking up on the rose, on some patchouli, but not. it's not a very dominant patchouli. You know how patchouli can really take over? No, this patchouli is playing rather nicely with the rose, with the oud, some musk. I'm not picking up on the magnolia, the only floral that I'm really picking up is the rose. Yeah. Um, now the patchouli is like intensifying, like I'm picking it up more, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And this is definitely a musk fragrance. Yeah, but that's all I'm getting, guys. I'm getting the rose. I'm getting the oud. I'm getting some patchouli. The patchouli is a bit more intense now, but it's not something that you need to be concerned about if you're okay with the note of patchouli. Yeah, and I'm definitely picking up on that oud. I wonder why they didn't mention that. And I also wonder if we have oud in this fragrance, but the Fenty fragrance doesn't have any oud. I don't know, hmm. But I really, really like this one. I'll circle back with you with some details. As far as the oud meter, by the way, I would say this is like a, hmm, I want to say two, but it's almost bordering on three because the oud is definitely present. I mean, I picked it up immediately. There is oud in this fragrance. 
Hmm. And as far as maturity, I would say that this is a fragrance that's more for like 30 and above. Yeah, anyway, I'll come back to you on this one. Let's move on. All right, so this next fragrance is supposed to be inspired by Bond Number no. Nine's Greenwich Village. And I'm talking about Alwatania Avenue. And I think it's Alwatania, but I may be mispronouncing it. So this is a fragrance that I've wanted to try for quite some time because obviously inspired by one of my favorite fragrances. So let's go ahead and try it. So this is the box. This is just a regular box, but nice color, just like Greenwich Village. You know, this is the color of the bottle of Greenwich Village. And let's see. Ooh, okay. Look at that bottle. Okay, so let me go ahead and give you the notes of this fragrance. So at the top, we have lychee, cassis, mandarin, orange. At the middle, we have peony, water lily, and jasmine. And at the base, we have ambroxan. So for those fam members that are sensitive to ambroxan, this fragrance is definitely not for you. But at the base, we have ambroxan, praline, vanilla, musk, and oak moss. Ooh, I can't wait to try it and see. Oh, wow. Oh, it has a very fresh opening. I am uh, laughing here because this opened exactly like Greenwich Village. It opens very, very fresh, just like Greenwich. And it's fruity. And I can clearly distinguish the fruits. I'm picking up on a little bit of florals, but not much. But this opening is just like Greenwich. I can tell you that right now. Okay, I'm picking up on some vanilla. And there's definitely musk in here. But that's all I'm really getting. I'm getting some florals. I'm getting some fruits. Vanilla. And it's definitely musky. Within the florals, I can now pick up a little bit on specifically the jasmine because you know the jasmine is something else. Like if you have the note of jasmine in a fragrance, get ready, right? But I can tell you that right now to my nose, the dominant notes here are the lychee, the vanilla, the musk, and some florals. I don't even want to say that the jasmine is dominant because to my nose, it's not. It's really like that floral bouquet that I'm picking up. Yeah. But it's not like I can distinguish, you know, all of the florals that I'm picking up. No, I just I just pick up on a little bit of jasmine, but I know that there's a combination of florals here, but I can't clearly distinguish what they are. So as far as oud, I'm not picking up on any oud at all whatsoever. And as far as the maturity for this fragrance, this is a fragrance that anybody can use early 20s and on absolutely absolutely this is just lovely just like Greenwich Village but you know let me um try it on skin and when I circle back with a review then I'm going to be able to tell you exactly what is it that I'm picking up that doesn't allow me to say that this fragrance is a hundred percent Greenwich because there's something here and I just can't I can't tell what is it that that I'm sniffing that. I'm like, oh, no, that's not Greenwich. Hmm. Yeah, but I'm gonna figure it out and then I'll circle back with you. Okay, so this next one is one that I've wanted to try for quite some time. And I'm sure that some of you were like, okay, so why hasn't she reviewed December Rose? So yes, I finally picked it up. Now it must be Fenty Day because this one is also supposed to be inspired by Fenty. So let's go ahead and check it out. So it comes in this very, very large box, very similar to December Vanilla, just that the box is red. And just like in December Vanilla, you can see that they outline the notes for you in the back. And it opens like this. And I'm sure you know by now that the bottle is exactly the same as December Vanilla. It just says December Rose and it's red. So it is quite weighty. It doesn't feel cheap 
at all. I really, really like this packaging that they've picked for this collection. Okay, so let me go ahead and give you the notes. So at the top, we have blueberry and tangerine. In the middle, we have Bulgarian rose, geranium, and magnolia. And then at the base, we have patchouli and musk. Now let me tell you, so these notes appear very similar to that other fragrance that I also told you was inspired by Fenty, uh, Rayway, Rayway, uh, yeah, but this one, this one has the note of blueberry. So give me a minute because I'm very curious to see what are the fruits in the Fenty fragrance. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and look it up. Okay, so the notes in this fragrance are exactly the notes in Fenty, right? So maybe this is the one that's going to be more like Fenty than the raw way that we looked at before. But let's go ahead and try it. Oof, very nice sprayer. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I waited this long to pick this one up. This smells glorious if you have the fenty fragrance and you picked up december rose or if you've compared them for whatever reason can you please let me know does this fragrance smell to you like fenty like 80 percent fenty 90 percent fenty because if this is what the fenty fragrance smells like i should have picked it up when it was launched and i also should have picked up this one earlier this smells glorious this is opening up with a very, very strong blueberry note. And coupled with that blueberry note, I can clearly pick up on the rose. The rose is not dominant. The blueberry is a bit more dominant than the rose, but they're really partnering together rather well because this blueberry note reminds me of another fragrance that I have in my collection, which is blueberry centric. And the blueberry there, well, it's like a punch in the face blueberry. And I'm talking about Tonka Jour. I don't know if you've ever tried that fragrance from Paralescent Perfumes, I think is, is the name of the fragrance house, but I love that fragrance. Ooh, it's all about blueberry. But this one is giving me that same type of blueberry, not the same opening, but it's giving me the same type of blueberry combined with the rose. I'm getting some faint citrus notes that give the fragrance a bit of freshness, which I'm glad because this fragrance is rather intense. I can tell that this is a beast mode fragrance. And imagine, I haven't even really let it sit much. So imagine after it macerates, wow. So I am picking up on those citrus notes, but, but they're just there to give some freshness. They're rather faint, kind of. I'm picking up on some geranium now, but the geranium is like in the background of the rose. Yeah, the geranium is not a key player here. The key player here, the star of this one is the blueberry. And the rose is trying to be a star, but the blueberry's like, no, I'm the star. <laughs> this fragrance is also rather musky. It's definitely musky. And I'm picking up on the patchouli. Yeah, yeah. And the patchouli is perfect because it's grounding the fragrance and giving it additional depth. Because that blueberry is such a strong note that it could have come across as kind of like a fruity fragrance, but it doesn't. And it's because that patchouli is grounding the fragrance. I love this. As far as oud meter, I'm not picking up on any oud here at all whatsoever. And as far as maturity, I would say that this, to me, this is a 30 plus fragrance. Um, someone in their late 20s that's rather, you know, mature could, could probably pull it off, but I think this is a 30 plus fragrance. This is a very intense, no nonsense fragrance. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I need to know if Fenty smells like this. I'm going to have to get my nose on that. Hmm. All right, moving on. Absolutely love it though. Okay, so for this next one, I'm sure that you will agree with me that We've had so many fragrances that have been launched inspired by Killian's Angel Share. I had decided that I was not going to pick up any other fragrance that was inspired by Angel Share because number one, I own Angel Share and I don't need to keep picking up fragrances that are inspired by the same fragrance over and over. But 
I made an exception with this one because I am absolutely obsessed with the other fragrances that I've picked up from this collection. And I am talking about the Shades of Dark series from Emir. You've seen me haul a couple of their fragrances and you know what my reaction has been. So I am really, really excited to see what this one is like because the others I've liked more than the one that they were inspired by. So I've liked those more than the original. I wonder how I'm going to feel about this one. I really do like Angel Share, but I'll tell you my opinion of it in a minute once I try this one. So like the other fragrances in this collection, it comes in like this tin type of container, but the tin is covered like with cardboard, but it feels very nice. It's very smooth. It has like a silky finish to it. Very nice. And here's the fragrance. Ooh, like the other bottles, very nice bottle. So here is the bottle. All right, so let me go ahead and share the notes of this one. And it has this little tassel again. I, I, I don't know how I'm feeling about tassels anymore. It seems like every other fragrance I try has a tassel. Like we, we, don't, we don't need all this. That's just my opinion. But anyway, so the notes of this one are cognac, oak, cinnamon, vanilla, sandalwood, tonka bean, and praline. So those are the notes for the most part of Angel Share. Very, very nice sprayer, by the way. Wow. Okay. This is opening exactly like Angel Share. It's a bit less deep. Because you know Angel Share is quite a deep, dark, uh, robust to call it something, fragrance. This one in the opening is airier. I wonder if it's because this one needs to macerate, but that opening was angel share, but airier. It's a sweet, warm, spicy. I can pick up on that cinnamon clearly in this one. Very, very boozy, just like angel share, but very, very boozy, but less less robust in that booziness, if that makes sense, than Angel Share. This one is just giving me an airier feel altogether, which I'm actually loving. Because I have to tell you, Angel Share is a fragrance that I do love, but I kinda, I kinda have to be like in the mood to wear it, because if not, it kinda makes me feel like, it's like kinda cloying to me. Not that I'm saying that it, that it is, because it is a lovely fragrance, but I have to be in the mood for it because it's there's a different intensity and twist to it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And of course, I'm picking up on a ton of vanilla here. But this is definitely Angel Share. I'm going to circle back with you because I want to try this on skin and compare it with Angel Share. So I'll probably spray on one side this one and on the other side Angel Share. But I feel that when it comes to this one, it's too soon for me to say if I like it more than Angel Share or if it's 100% Angel Share. Right now, I can tell you that it's definitely airier than Angel Share. As far as the oud meter in this one, I'm not picking up any oud whatsoever. And as far as maturity, I would say that this is definitely a 30 plus fragrance. This, just like Angel Share, yeah, I think you have to be like, in your 30s to pull that off, you know, 30 plus. Yeah, okay, so I'll circle back with you. Okay, so this next fragrance is also from the Shades of Dark series, like the one that we just uh, tried. But this one I think is inspired by Killian's Intoxicate, which is a fragrance that I never picked up, but I did have a decant of because I looked at the notes and it sounded interesting and I wanted to try it. So I had my Killian essay send me a decant. Um, and I really did use it for about a week at the time and I just never picked it up. Not because I disliked it, I guess I didn't like it enough at the time, right, to pick it up. I'm talking about your drugged, and it comes in the same type of tin, so I'm not gonna put you through all that, just that the, the fragrance that we took a look at before had like a brown 
tinge to it and this one is definitely a black one and of course the bottle is the same so let me go ahead and share with you the notes of this one so the top notes are cinnamon and whiskey the middle notes are cardamom and nutmeg and at the base we have coffee and vanilla so let's go ahead and spray it Ooh. did you guys see that sprayer that was a really nice sprayer just like the one before it opens like you know with a big spray that covers a big area okay so I'm clearly immediately picking up on the cardamom and I'm also picking up on the coffee um I have to tell you I'm not picking up on cinnamon at all I'm picking up on the cardamom the cardamom in the opening was the star, but now the coffee is competing for attention. But let me tell you, so this coffee, so you remember uh, when we hauled, I can't remember which coffee fragrance, but I told you that I, I felt like I smelled like I smell like a barista. So this coffee in this fragrance does not smell like prepared black coffee. No, this smells like when you have coffee beans and you and you grind them at home, you know that ground coffee? Yeah, that's what this coffee smells like. But I have to tell you, the cardamom is present and doesn't want to go anywhere. It's just there parked. <laughs> it's cardamom and coffee. I'm not picking up on cinnamon at all. I'm not picking up on anything else but the cardamom, the coffee, and a little bit of vanilla. The vanilla is definitely in the background of the cardamom and coffee who are center stage. Wow, this is very interesting. This is very aromatic and spicy, obviously, if I'm telling you that the cardamom is just taking over. This is very, very aromatic. It's also a bit sweet, very boozy, very, very boozy. But we knew that this fragrance, you know, is supposed to be boozy. It's part of like their, I can't remember what the name of the collection is for Killian, but yeah, they, they, they're all uh, centered around like that boozy note. But even though this fragrance is very, very boozy, the stars here, I'm telling you, are the cardamom and the coffee. Let me know if you've tried Intoxicate, if you own Intoxicate and this fragrance, or if you've tried them both. What is your opinion? Needless to say, I'm not going to tell you um, if it's 90% or 100% until I test it. And I'm going to try and find, because I know I have the remains of that decant somewhere, I'm going to try and find it so I can compare it and then tell you. I really do like this fragrance. Much like Intoxicate, it's just not a love for me. And I don't know why, because I really do appreciate cardamom. Maybe it's the coffee, or maybe it's the combination of the cardamom and the coffee. Like, I'm really liking this fragrance. I would definitely wear it now that I have this bottle. But it's not like a love. But who knows? Let me try it on skin, and I'll circle back with you. <laughs> Very interesting. So... All of the fragrances in this collection are definitely fragrances that you should really consider picking up if you're familiar with the one that they were inspired on because they're done so exquisitely. But what I also find is that the entire experience with these fragrances that come in this in this collection, it's just really, really lovely. So I'm really looking forward to testing this one. I will be shocked if I end up being like completely in love with this one. Anyway, I'll circle back with you. All right, so the next two fragrances that we're gonna try are two fragrances that I really have heard so many people talk about, and I've really been looking forward to trying them, and I just never got around to picking them up. And now for the spring and summer season, I decided that I was finally gonna get them. And I don't have the original of these two, but we'll talk more about that. So it's um, Atlantis Coral, and then Atlantis and let's go ahead and start with Atlantis coral so it comes in this box as you can see it's got like that coral design there ah oh. and here's the fragrance and here is the bottle 
Look at the cap. Very, very nice. It's very weighty and luxurious. It really feels rather nice. I'm really liking this. So let me go ahead and share the notes with you. So let me also tell you that this fragrance is supposed to be inspired by Tiziana Terenzi's Poggia. And that is a fragrance that I considered picking up, you know, Poggia itself. But honestly, it was so, so, so expensive and I couldn't get a sample no matter how I tried. And I just really didn't feel like I wanted to blind buy it. Not this one, nor the other one, which is Kubia. But I'm really hoping that this is really good. Anyway, let's go ahead and spray it. All right, so let me go ahead and share the notes with you. So the top notes are lemon, bergamot, peaches, and oranges. In the middle, it has sea notes and passion fruit. And at the base, it has vanilla and musk. So this sounds like it's going to be a fruity fragrance with a hoping a aquatic feel to it because of the sea notes. I don't know, very interesting. And then you have that vanilla. This, this should be really good, but let's go ahead and spray it. Very nice sprayer. Okay, so this one is very aromatic. I'm surprised. And it's also fresh, spicy. It's sweet, but not very sweet. This is a very balanced fragrance. I can tell you that from the get-go. Picking up on some citrus notes, but I can't distinguish what is it. Is it bergamot or is it lemon? I just know that there's some citrus notes in here. Is it lemon, bergamot, orange? What is it? I, I don't know. I, it's just like a very well-balanced fragrance. I'm also picking up on a bit of woodiness. And yeah, there is definitely an aquatic quality to this fragrance. Yeah, like a marine type of feel to it. This is very, very, very nice. For summer, oh my goodness, this is gonna be incredible. I may have to take a look at Poggia again from Tiziana. But this, this is very, very nice. If you have Poggia in your collection and you picked up uh, Atlantis Coral, let me know what your thoughts are. Okay, so I can tell you that dominant to my nose, I am picking up on quite a bit of peach, definitely the passion fruit, vanilla, and musk. And I am picking up on the rose, but it's, it, it's quite faint. As far as the oud meter, I'm not picking up on any oud whatsoever in this fragrance. There is no oud in this fragrance. And as far as maturity, Believe it or not, I think anybody can get away with this. This is definitely a feminine fragrance though, but I think 20 and above can definitely, you know, wear this without any problem. This is absolutely gorgeous. I, I'm really blown away, guys. And it's really made me wonder, should I, you know, have picked up Poggia to begin with? I may have to do that. Oh my goodness, I'm loving this. Absolutely loving this. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. All right, so let me know if you've tried this one and your thoughts on it. But I will be circling back, of course, with a detailed review because I want to try it on skin. But on paper, I almost don't want to move forward. <laughs> All right, moving on. Okay, so then the next one is Atlantis and it comes in this box, same box. And let's see, yep, double box. Ooh, very, very nice. Very, very nice. Look at that bottle. Very, very nice. And the cap. Okay, so the notes for this one are at the top we have bergamot and lemon. In the middle we have sea salt and uh, blue hyacinth. And at the base we have cedar wood and musk. Hmm. This one is not going to be very fruity based on those notes. I have a feeling this is gonna be more of a fresh fragrance, but. Okay, so as I expected, this one opens up much more citrusy than Atlantis Coral. Yeah. Yeah, very, very citrusy, very fresh, very, very fresh. And as soon as it opens, you, you, you start to pick up on that aquatic quality to it. It's more pronounced in this one than in Atlantis Coral. 
yeah this is definitely a fresh but this is oh my goodness this is incredible wow have you guys picked up these fragrances i am so impressed i'm telling you you're probably gonna see a haul with me picking up both of tiziana terenzi's fragrances because now i'm like oh man i should have picked those up wow there's also a bit of woodiness here but the woodiness is faint, like to give it a bit of character and not just make it, you know, like a just a watery, freshy type of fragrance. I'm also picking up on like a bit of tartness. There's a tartness that just adds to the beauty of this fragrance. My goodness, I am in love with this fragrance, guys. Wow. Oof, I'm going to have to get those other fragrances. This is exquisite. This is summer in a bottle. This is perfection. But this is like your perfect freshy for the summer. Yeah, this is not the fruity one. I really believe that the fruity kind of floral one, of course, is Atlantis Coral. And I love that. I love that fragrance already. Um, but this one, oh my goodness, this one is so, so beautifully fresh. Yeah, and it's sweet. It's not very sweet, but it's sweet. It's a freshy that's sweet. And those woody notes are really, really working very well with that freshness. As far as oud meter, there is no oud here. And as far as maturity, this is a fragrance that anybody can pull off. And does this lean masculine? Cause you know, I've been telling you that it's such a fresh, you're probably wondering, well, does it lean masculine? No, it doesn't. This is definitely unisex. I can see a man or a woman using this without a problem. This is just, a, oh my goodness. This is such a good fragrance for the summer. Wow, absolutely loving it absolutely loving it so i'm loving both because they're not the same at all one is definitely the freshy and the other one is the fruity one but absolutely loving them okay so this next fragrance is one that i've also been looking forward to trying because i think i'm the last person to try this fragrance but let's see so i'm talking about cadlash nua and this fragrance i could not find what if anything it was inspired by so if you know if this was inspired by any other fragrance please let me know so let's go ahead and share with you the bottle so it comes in this box by the way just a regular box and let's see Ooh, I think I can already smell it oh I hope it's not leaking or broken hold on Oh no, it's good. It's good, but wow. Okay. Ooh, I'm liking that. <laughs> but anyway, okay. So let me go ahead and share with you the notes. So the top notes are apple and coconut, and I can already pick up on the coconut. Uh, middle notes are jasmine, heliotrope, and rose. And for the base, we have sandalwood, cashmere, and vanilla. So let's go ahead and spray it. Okay, so I can tell you right from the get-go, this fragrance does have a pretty strong tropical vibe to it. It is sweet. It has that tropical vibe, like I said before, because it's really, really dominant. There are some florals in here, but I can't clearly distinguish what they are yet. There's also like a creamy quality to this fragrance. And I'm picking up on a little bit a little bit at this point of powderiness and i wonder where that powderiness is coming from but yeah there's definitely some powderiness here but what i'm picking up the most is like that creamy quality is very present uh just as well as that tropical feel to it it's it's a complete tropical vibe fragrance this is definitely a summer fragrance you could you could use it during the spring but to me, this is definitely a summer fragrance, but I'm liking it. I can pick up on that coconut clearly. So now I'm picking up on the florals, um, but it's not that I'm picking up on florals. I'm really just picking up on jasmine right now. I'm not picking up on any other floral. I haven't really picked up on the apple. I've just picked up on the coconut. The coconut has been with me since I first sniffed it. Actually, since before I sniffed it for some reason, I could just smell the fragrance as I opened the box and I could pick up on the coconut. And I'm loving it. 
and I'm pretty sure that coconut is the one that's lending to that creamy feeling now that I think about it. Yeah, yeah, because it is definitely, oh my goodness, there's such a tropical feel to this fragrance. It's putting me like in summer vibe. Yeah, what I'm picking up is jasmine. Yeah, but I'm really, really loving it. As far as oud, there is no oud in this fragrance. I can't pick up any oud whatsoever. And as far as maturity, anybody can definitely wear this fragrance. Yeah, so I'll just circle back with you once I try it on skin and I test it. But I am really liking this one. This is definitely a summer fragrance and it was so affordable. Oh my goodness. Anyway, moving on. All right, so this next fragrance is also one that I've so been looking forward to trying because I think I'm the last person to try this fragrance. And I'm talking about Latafa's The African Drummer. La African Drummer, actually. And look at this beautiful box. And let's see. Hmm. Oh, it has like a circle at the bottom so you can just push the box out I guess yeah yeah Ooh. okay huh look at this box guys very very nice right very very nice wow really beautiful packaging and then okay very nice and then the fragrance and then the fragrance is in there oh it has a little booklet by Latafa and here is the fragrance. Wow. I am loving, 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 loving this bottle. Look at this bottle. Please let me know if you've picked up this fragrance. I am really loving this bottle and it's quite weighty. It feels rather luxurious and this is not a sticker. I mean, Wow, this is really, really nice, really beautiful. Okay, so let me go ahead and share the notes with you. Okay, so the top notes are bergamot and coconut. Yay, another coconut fragrance. The middle notes are jasmine, orange blossom, and lang lang. And then at the base, we have ambroxan. So for those of you that are sensitive to ambroxan, this one is not for you. But at the base, we have ambroxan, we have vanilla, we have musk, and by the way, I forgot to tell you that this one is inspired by Dolce, uh, Dolce & Gabbana's The Only One Intense, I think it's called. That's not a fragrance that I have in my collection, but people talk quite a bit about that fragrance and they actually really enjoy it. So I'm really looking forward to trying this one and then maybe I'll have to get my nose on the OG. If you have the OG and you also have this one or if you've compared them, please let us know your thoughts. Okay, so let me go ahead and spray it. Ooh, very nice sprayer, very, very nice. Ooh, oh wow, this is really strong. Okay, so I don't own, like I told you, that Dolce & Gabbana, the only one intense, but wow, if this is what it smells like, I think I'm gonna like that fragrance. This smells really, really good, guys. So. I am picking up on the bergamot. I'm still not getting the coconut though. I'm picking up on the jasmine, but no orange blossom. And orange blossom is a note that whenever I see it, I'm looking for it because I absolutely love it. I'm not picking up on any other florals except for the jasmine right now. And I'm not picking up on the vanilla. This is very musky. I'm not picking up on anything but that coconut the musk and the jasmine like that's it and it's definitely very musky very musky and i'm really surprised that i'm not picking up on the vanilla at all because i'm not but for some reason i really am enjoying this fragrance maybe what it is is that this is blended so well that it doesn't allow me to distinguish the other notes because all in all, I really am really liking this fragrance. And there's also like a freshness to it. There is a freshness to it. It's a little tiny bit sweet, like a tad sweet, but not more than that. But I think that's because I'm not picking up on the vanilla. Maybe this fragrance just needs to sit. Yeah, so definitely for me, the dominant notes right now, what my nose is really picking up is on the coconut, the jasmine, and the musk. Other than that, I'm 
really not picking up much of anything else, but I have a feeling that this fragrance just needs to sit. But curiously enough, even though I'm only picking up on those notes, I'm really liking this fragrance because there's also like a freshness to it. I think that once I let it sit, I'll be able to more clearly determine if I really love this fragrance or just like it. Um, but I can tell you right now that this is a fragrance that number one has no oud before you ask me this fragrance has no oud unless the oud comes out after it sits for a while because today I did not pick up on telling you on anything but those three notes and um, as far as maturity I would say that this is a fragrance for 30 plus I, I don't think that this is a young you know early 20s type of person fragrance I think this is definitely for 30 plus but I'm really, really enjoying it, and I'm certainly loving that bottle. Absolutely love the bottle. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. All right, so this next fragrance is from a collection that I've been looking forward to picking up and actually trying. But if I'm honest with you, it's like it's supposedly already launched, and it actually obviously did because I have one of their fragrances, but, but I haven't been able to find it anywhere i was just able to pick up this one fragrance but the others that are a part of the collection i haven't been able to try and i'm really really interested because one of the fragrances in the collection is supposed to be inspired by mazan crivelli's hibiscus mahajad which i absolutely love so this one is from the artisan perfumery collection and of course fragrance world and the name of it is brown sugar and it is supposed to be inspired by boho boco red wine brown sugar now i don't have not even one fragrance from boho boco so i'm not familiar with the dna of that fragrance house or their fragrances and of course I have not tried brown sugar so if you have brown sugar or you've tried any of their fragrances please let us know your thoughts on them in the meantime let's go ahead and try this one so it comes in this box very very nice box as you can tell and this is how it opens Ooh, very nice very very nice bottle huh Look at that bottle. Very, very nice. Very beautiful. And the cap is made like of some sort of foam material, but curiously enough, it does not feel cheap at all. It is very, this is a very luxurious bottle. It's very weighty and this cap is very nice. Very, very nice. It does not feel cheap at all. Honestly, the bottle is giving me like art like piece of art type of vibe. Very, very nice, very nice. Okay, so the notes for this fragrance are at the top we have raspberry, davana, and red wine. In the middle we have geranium, rose, and caramel. And at the base we have patchouli, cedarwood, and brown sugar. Oh, let's go ahead and spray it. Wow, very nice sprayer. Ooh. Ooh, okay, from the opening guys, this fragrance is powdery. And if it's opening with this level of powderiness, you have to like a powdery fragrance. You have to enjoy powdery fragrances to like this one. This is very, very nice, wow. Okay, so it opens powdery. I am getting a little bit of the wine note, I think. I have to be honest with you, I haven't sniffed many fragrances with a note of wine, but I think, I think that I'm picking up on something that smells like a wine, like a red wine, like a Merlot type of red wine. And I am picking up on the rose, but not on the geranium. And I'm also getting the caramel. And I have to tell you, now that the caramel stepped in, this fragrance is giving me gourmand vibes. Yeah, it's definitely giving me gourmand vibes. But I would not say that this is a gourmand fragrance. But it's giving me gourmand vibes. Oh, wow. This fragrance is definitely sweet. And I'm also picking up on the patchouli now. And the patchouli is quite present. It's not a demure patchouli, it's not a faint patchouli, it's not a light patchouli, it's not an intense patchouli. It's there. Yeah, this is beautiful. Wow, this is very different. 
I have nothing like this in my collection. Wow. Yeah. I'm picking up on that wine note now clearly. Definitely. Oh yeah. The rose, but the rose has taken like a back seat now. My nose dominant is that wine note, the rose, which is in the background, and that caramel. The wine and the caramel are taking the show on. And then patchouli. Yeah. Yeah. I really do like this fragrance, but this is different. I wouldn't say that this is a safe blind buy. This is a very complex and different fragrance. It's definitely now made me curious. I may have to get some sort of discovery set from Boho Coco. Wow, this is, this, this, this was named right when they call it artisan perfumery. Yeah, this is very, very, very different and very nicely done. But this is not a safe blind buy. I mean, if you like the notes or if you have the original uh, red wine brown sugar from Boho Coco, you know, but um, yeah. And the reason I'm saying it's not a safe blind buy, it's because this, this does not smell to me like it's a mass appealing type of fragrance. It really isn't. Um, but it's so beautifully complex. Wow. This is really good. This is really, really good. Anyway. Okay. I move on. I am going to circle back with you once I, uh, try it and test it, but only if I can find inventory somewhere, because right now I think even this one may be sold out at this point and I just can't get my hands on the other two. Um, but anyway, more to come. I'll let you guys know. Okay, so this next fragrance is one that I am so excited to finally get my nose on because I've heard so many great things about it. And obviously we are all vanilla fragrance lovers, right? And I am speaking about Le Bois, Bois de Vanille. So this is not a sticker. There's some texture to it. It's just a very, very nice box, but let's go ahead and see what it looks like when we open it. Oh. Oh wow, look at that. Beautiful opening and there is the fragrance. And here is the bottle. Very nice bottle, very, very nice bottle. And look at the cap. I hope the camera is capturing it. Very, very luxurious, very nice. And guys, this fragrance is so, so heavy. Oh my goodness. It just feels incredible. I'm really, really loving this fragrance. All right, so let's go ahead and share with you the notes. So the top notes are bergamot and cassis buds. In the middle, we have solar and rose. And at the base, we have coconut, vanilla, and amber. All right, so let's go ahead and try it. Wow, incredible sprayer. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. This, this is definitely a fragrance to be hyped. Wow. Okay, so this is warm and sweet. Uh, a little bit of fruitiness here, but I haven't distinguished yet what it is. Um, I'm also picking up on some woody notes and a little bit of powderiness already. Oh my goodness, guys. This, this is a fragrance that you have to get your hands on. It is sold out everywhere, guys, but I'll be on the lookout. And when I find it, I will let you all know, because if you can, you should really try and pick this up. This is beautiful. This vanilla is done exquisitely. This to me is almost like Guerlain level vanilla. And that's a lot to say for me. Believe me, this is, oh, this could definitely compete. Yeah, this is really exquisite. Wow. This is beautiful. So I'm going to tell you right now that I can't distinguish any of the notes exactly. Like I know there's coconut here, but I can't really like pinpoint the coconut. You know, when I sniff it, I can't say, oh, there's the coconut. And how intense is the coconut or not? It is definitely fruity, but I, it's, it's blended so much. Oh my gosh. It's blended just so well, guys. It's just beautiful. All I can tell you is that it is fruity. It is sweet. Not, not very, very sweet, but it is sweet. The vanilla here is the star. Like this fragrance is all about the vanilla and the vanilla has been done 
to perfection. Wow. Oh my goodness, I wonder what other fragrances they have because if they can do this, wow. Oh my goodness, this is perfection. So this is definitely a higher price point of fragrance, but it not, not very high, it's very affordable. I can't remember what I paid, but it's, it's not like $20 or even $40. It may have been 60 something or something, I, I don't know. But this fragrance is so, so worth it. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna see what else they have because I had never even heard of the brand until this was, you know, hyped. Um, but I'm rather impressed with the quality of this fragrance. It is absolutely exquisite. If you've picked up this fragrance, can you please let us know your opinion? So you don't even have to wait for me to circle back with a review. If you can get your hands on it, just pick it up because I am telling you, if you love a great vanilla fragrance, you are going to absolutely love this one. Wow. All right, guys, so we've reached the end of today's video. And as always, please don't forget to let us know if you have any of these fragrances and what are your thoughts. I can tell you that from today, there's so many fragrances that I absolutely loved, but the ones that really, really stood out for me are that Le Bois fragrance, the vanilla one, oh my goodness, exquisite. And then the Ostoff Atlantis collection, the coral, and then the regular, Atl oh my goodness, those two, are amazing and then the avenue fragrance really really impressed me because i am really looking forward to testing it side by side with the greenwich village fragrance from bond number no. nine because to me it smelled almost 100 percent the same there's just something in there that i have to figure out needless to say the amir fragrances i really really think I'm going to enjoy. Even the one that, you know, that I really didn't pick up from Killian, um, I think I'm going to really enjoy that fragrance, the one that was inspired by Intoxicate. Um, and then I can also tell you that I really, really loved December Rose. Oh my goodness, I should have picked that up before. That is a truly incredible fragrance. All in all, guys, all of the fragrances that we tried to today, I think are really special. And I just have to test them and kind of figure out how I feel about the notes in some of them. And then I'll circle back with you with a detailed review as always. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging with me today. And I will see you in the next video.